Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Triboelectric Tuesdays, where we dive into the technique of separating botanical particles using static electricity. If you're curious about the topic, keep watching. Today will be a double episode, and we'll discuss both the geometric shape of the particle and the particle chemistry, since there's a strong relationship between the two. If you've been watching this series for a while, thank you. If you're new to the channel, my name is Charles. I'm an educator and, at times, an inventor. I take a science-based approach to my customers' problems and develop solutions. A follower, and now friend, sent me a paper called Analysis of Cannabinoids in Laser Microdissected Trichomes of Medicinal Cannabis Sativa Using LCMS and Cryogenic NMR by Nisar Hapayana and many others. Check the comments below for the citation. The mainstream understanding is that disc cells in the trichome are where cannabinoids and terpenes are made. Certainly, it's what I've read and how I understand it. However, this paper suggests that cannabinoids are also made in trichome stalks, though the cells that make up the stalk, stripe and basal, aren't well studied. By isolating the stalks and analyzing them, they did find cannabinoids. My interpretation of this data is that if stalks make cannabinoids, the fact that they're only found in small quantities likely means they are on their way to the trichome head. Also, cannabinoids are deadly to the plant, which is why they're stored outside the plant, furthermore reaffirming my belief that stocks are more of a path than a destination. Another interesting fact is that capitate cecile trichomes, those are long needle-like ones, only produce about a third of the cannabinoids found in capitate stock trichomes. Those are the round heads on a stock. This isn't surprising after taking so many microphotos of trichomes. Sacile trichomes are simply smaller and have less space for cannabinoids and terpenes. A third type of trichome, the bulbous trichome, tends to be small and has a different cannabinoid profile than sacile or capitate trichomes. Lastly, trichomes of various types tend to be found pretty much everywhere in the plant, not just in the flowers. Put a pin on that because this is important. By now you're wondering, what does this have to do with electrostatic? What do we collect on the glove? Round trichome heads. And why is that? I believe it's mostly because of chemistry. How do I know? Because I see far too many small round trichomes on the tails of the static process. Though I wondered why, I now firmly believe it is because of the chemistry. I say this because I also believe these small heads aren't mostly capitate stock trichomes, but bulbous trichomes that are always small and, because according to the paper, they cannot produce THC or CBD. If they are in fact just small capitate stock trichomes, they would be immature. The paper also confirms that, as we all know, small trichomes generally contain only small amounts of cannabinoids. Confused? My colleague Justin theorizes that the electrical charge of heads is heavily impacted by the presence of acid-formed cannabinoids and those particles that nucleate. If this holds true, then why don't capitate cecile trichomes electrically charge? We know this because we don't pick them up on the glove. My theory is that the net amount of acids is too small to create enough charge. Remember, we just discussed these types of trichomes may only have a third the cannabinoids of capitate stock trichomes. Well, think of these as such a weak battery that they simply can't hold the charge relative to the overall mass of the particle. So what, you ask? Well, every single conversation I've had with Aesthetic Tech Pro postulate that tails are worthless. Though I would phrase this as less desirable. Certainly, the paper claims there's value in the product. In case you're not following me, when we static sift, we only collect round heads and discard everything else. Sometimes a huge pile of hash turns into a puddle of heads. Just like with water extraction, some cultivars work with the technology better than others. That leftover pile, however, need not be discarded. This product can be extracted using a solvent or kept solventless by infusing it with a carrier oil and making edibles. One important point I learned from Wolverine dabs is that as little as 1% contaminants in your hash can negatively impact flavor. 
So although the tails fraction may not be the most flavorful, they certainly should be reprocessed. This is something we typically cannot do with water extraction, giving static a clear advantage. Lots of lessons learned here. Number one, breed for solventless. Always loop your trichomes to see what you have. Look for capitate stock cultivars. Lots of needle-like trichomes should be a pass for both static and water extraction. The second lesson learned is that tails may contain a significant percentage of cannabinoids. Although the volume of heads may be less, they would typically represent triple the cannabinoid content than Cecile trichomes by volume. Unlike water extraction, static tails can easily be reprocessed using solvents or other methods. A third lesson is that trichomes of all kinds come from many places on the plant. Some of those trichomes will positively impact yield, but negatively impact flavor. If you're doing water extraction, take note. If you're doing static, you're killing it. I want to strongly encourage every grower and hash maker to own and carry a loop. I have a master's degree in diamond grading, so I know a thing or two about loops. For those of you who will be at MJ BizCon, stop by booth 2719 and the first five of you get a free loop. I only ask that you share our content, tag us to help spread the word. If you can't make it to MJ Biz, consider supporting us by getting one off our website. My loops are corrected for color and spherical aberration, has a light, and it's USB rechargeable. In case you're wondering, the purpose of this series is to educate and to be educated. Take my research and make your own static device. Use this knowledge to better understand manual static sift and make better products. If you make a discovery, how about paying it forward and letting us all know? I'd like to know your experience or ideas about this process. What do you think about my colleague Justin's theory on acidic cannabinoids? Please share in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Hi everyone, thanks for watching. If you found this video entertaining and you learned something today, please consider supporting us by clicking this button here. Much appreciated.